Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Okay, so three weeks ago now, I looked into claims from you lot that AMD's new third gen Ryzen processors weren't boosting correctly, namely the single core max boost wasn't being achieved. And I had noticed on my own test system that AMD Zen 2 processors behaved a bit differently to what we were used to seeing from Intel, but overall performance was solid and the max boosts were being achieved if only for a brief moment. But up until that point, I'd really only monitored clock frequencies using the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Extreme. So I set out to test a wider range of boards. And before long, I found multiple examples where the Ryzen processors were falling 25, 50, and even 100 megahertz or more short of the advertised max boost clock. For the testing shown in that video, I exclusively featured the Ryzen 7 3800X, but that wasn't the only processor that I tested with. I now own more than a dozen third gen Ryzen processors and I've also borrowed quite a few from local retailer PC case gear and all of them boosted correctly on the Aorus Extreme along with a few other select boards. However, there were more X570 boards that didn't boost correctly, so I was quite confident we were looking at a BIOS issue, likely something that could be corrected with an updated AGISA version. But there were a lot of you that seemed quite convinced that the issue was unsolvable and it was a fundamental issue with the silicon, which I have to say did seem a little odd to me given we demonstrated the same CPU working on some boards, but not others. And the board brand or quality didn't appear to be a factor. Anyway, to their credit, AMD did acknowledge this issue existed. They released a statement informing the community that a fix was coming and that we could expect some kind of update on the 10th of September. Early last week on the 10th, AMD made a post on their community blog explaining the issue and detailing how they were going to go about fixing it and let us know when the updated BIOS revisions would be available. In short, AMD said final BIOSes will be released within the next three weeks. But as many of you are probably aware, we got beta versions pretty much straight away. And at this point, a couple of companies such as Gigabyte have now released their official BIOSes featuring the latest version of the AGISA code. And we'll be testing one of those today. But before we get to that, here's a few noteworthy things AMD talked about in the blog post. The first important takeaway being that the initial AGISA 1.0.0.3 versions, which reduced clock speed slightly, had nothing to do with reliability. AMD made this quite clear and went on to say they perform extensive engineering analysis to develop reliability models and to model the lifetime of their processes before entering mass production. AGISA version 1.0.0.3ab contained changes to improve system stability and performance, but these changes were not made for product longevity reasons. AMD further backed this up by stating that they do not expect the improvements that are made in the boost frequency for the ABBA AGISA code to have any impact on the lifespan of Ryzen processors. Essentially, AMD is just going through the process of optimizing the platform. The previous update implemented a series of software changes that would help the processor ignore requests to increase voltage or frequency from lightweight applications. This made the third gen Ryzen CPUs more efficient for lighter workloads, but did have a slight negative impact on the max single core frequency. The ABBA, or ABBA update, optimizes this further with an activity filter that allows the CPU boost algorithm to disregard irregular OS and application background noise. For example, video playback, game launches, monitoring utilities, peripheral utilities, and so on. These use cases tend to make regular requests for higher boost states, but their intermittent nature would fall below the threshold of the activity filter. The end result being AMD expects you'll see lower desktop voltages of around 1.2 volt for the cores when actively tackling the task just mentioned. However, AMD also note the voltage range scales from as little as 0.2 volts right up to 1.5 volts. So yes, the third gen Ryzen processors are designed and tested to run up to 1.5 volts. So don't freak out if you see 1.5 volts reported as the maximum voltage in applications such as Hardware Info, for example. Anyway, that all sounds good and well, but does it actually work? Thankfully, we can already look at the ABBA AGISA and we'll be doing so with a few different boards in this video. I received official BIOSes from ASUS and Gigabyte ahead of time. And since the Aorus Elite was one of the higher tier boards from my previous test that didn't boost that well, I thought we'd start there. So here's the Ryzen 9 3900X installed on the Aorus Elite using the latest ABBA and previous ABB AGISA versions. 
Please note I'm using monitoring software while running all these tests and that does negatively impact performance. Using hardware info though, we can monitor clock speeds during the Cinebench R20 tests and we'll start with some multi-threaded results. Based on an average of three runs, we saw the score increase by just 0.25%. So needless to say, performance for multi-core workloads will go largely unchanged. The maximum boost clock reported during this test was increased by 1.6%. Basically, when I hit the start button, the 3900X would hit this frequency for a split second. But overall, the sustained clock speeds look to be much the same. Now, when running the single core test, we see a mere 1% increase in clock speed with the ABBA version. However, the single core score was boosted by 5% and this is due to the fact that the newer revision allows the processor to maintain higher clock speeds for the duration of the test. Granted though, 5% is hardly a big performance increase, but this is back in line with our review score of 509 points and I suspect our score would be even higher if we weren't running hardware info. Next up, I installed the 3800X and again, we'll start with the multi-core test. This time we see a 0.16% increase with the newer BIOS revision. So again, basically identical performance from a three run average. The peak single core clock speed was increased by 1.7% and we're now exceeding the advertised 4.5 gigahertz max boost clock. Then this time we see a 1.4% increase in single core score when using the newer BIOS while the max boost clock was increased by 1.7%. So while the score has improved and the frequency on the box has now been achieved, it's not exactly game changing. Moving on to the 3700X, here we see a 1.4% increase in multi-core score, but this time the max single core boost frequency wasn't seen, falling short of the 4.4 gigahertz target by eight megahertz. That said, the board did hit a 44 times multiplier. The limitation here was the 99.8 megahertz base frequency set by the Aorus Elite. Despite a 2% increase in score for the single core test, we see the same 4,392 megahertz frequency cap. If Gigabyte were running a 100 megahertz base clock, 4,400 megahertz would have been achieved. So we're only seeing a 0.6% frequency increase here. Finally, we have the 3600X and we see the same issue. The CPU falls just short of the max target because of the base clock. Despite that, we still see a 2% increase in single core performance and a 1.7% increase for the max boost clock. For those wondering, manually setting the boost clock to 100 megahertz still saw the board run at 99.8 megahertz. But forcing 101 megahertz did fix the issue and now the CPU is hitting 4,444 megahertz. Now, I should mention that I've tested this updated Agisa version on almost a dozen boards now, and I found it pushed the third gen Ryzen processors up to the advertised max boost, with the exception of a few gigabyte boards that fell 8 MHz short. Here is a quick look at the boost behavior on the ASUS X570-P, one of the cheapest X570 motherboards you can buy. Again, we're looking at just a 0.3% increase in multi-core score with the update, though at the start of the test, so the initialization period, the update allowed the 3900X to hit 4.6 gigahertz, and that's something we didn't see with the previous version. However, the single core performance was improved rather massively. This time we see a score of 517 points, and again, this is based on an average of three runs, and the results were all quite similar for each run with a deviation of just a few points. So this means the new BIOS is improving the single core performance by 7%, and that is quite a big performance uplift. Of course, if you were seeing very close to the advertised boost clocks on your board, then you may not see a 7% increase, but as we saw, it varies quite a bit depending on your board. So having seen that 7% increase, that prompted me to make some late benchmark additions to this video. It's not much, but I have compared the ASUS X570P using the ABB and the ABBA revisions in a few games at 1080p using the R9 3900X and RTX 2080 Ti. Far Cry New Dawn saw a 4-7% increase in performance, which is more than I was expecting to see. Again, the only change made here has been to the BIOS version. All settings within the BIOS are the same. All I'm really doing here is enabling XMP. The gain seen when testing with World War Z are less impressive. This time we're only looking at a 1% increase, which is honestly pretty much what I was expecting to find. Yet despite that, F1 2019 provided us with another 3-7% gain with the new Agisa code. But before you go getting too excited, please note that I have never tested the ASUS X570P for any of these sort of game benchmarks. So 
This may not be representative of all X570 boards and likely won't be the case for something like the Aorus Extreme, for example, and that's the board I've been using for all our Ryzen gaming benchmarks. Still, this should mean that overall performance is now more consistent. We should have less reports of people not hitting the advertised boost clocks. And just lastly, here's a look at total system consumption measured from the wall. Using the ASUS X570P, we see a 3% increase in power draw for the single core test, and then a mere 1.4% increase for the multi-core test. Naturally, AMD is pushing slightly higher voltages to stabilize the CPU at these higher clock speeds. Overall, this appears to have played out like we thought it might back when concluding our initial Ryzen boost clock investigation. It did seem pretty clear to us that this wasn't a silicon issue and that it would indeed be something that AMD could address given enough time. Also, a number of our Patreon members who weren't seeing the max single core frequency achieved on their board previously have now told us that the new Agisa version has fixed that, and they're also reporting a decent gain for the Cinebench single core test, but almost nothing for the multi-core test, so that's very much in line with what we've found here. At the end of the day, it is nice to see AMD working quite quickly to address this issue, but of course it would have been nice if the issue never needed to be addressed in the first place, but at least it looks like it is now fixed. And I think for the most part, you won't really notice a difference. Of course, that depends on your motherboard, how it was boosting previously, but I think for most of you, the difference won't really be noticed. And on that note, I feel like this issue has been blown massively out of proportion, but I think that's largely down to the fact that quite a few people were convinced their CPUs were defective. Silicon lottery duds, if you will. And that's something I could have better addressed in my previous video as I said earlier, I had tested a good number of Ryzen CPUs and many of them were retail chips and all of them boosted correctly on the Aorus Extreme while they didn't on other motherboards. So it seemed pretty clear to us that this was some kind of bias issue. I also had a Patreon member, Ibslice. He drove over to my place on a Sunday. So he sacrificed half of his weekend uh, to spend the day testing at my place. And he did this because his 3900X didn't boost correctly in his system but we found that it did boost correctly on my Aorus Extreme test system. In fact, it exceeded the advertised max boost clock by 50 megahertz, only for a brief moment, but it did do that. So he was quite happy to see that his CPU was capable of doing that out of the box with the right hardware. So yeah, again, it seemed like it was a BIOS issue and he has since updated his system to the latest BIOS featuring the Agisa ABBA version. And he is now seeing the expected boost clocks achieved. So that's good news there. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for this one. I will continue to do a bit more testing on this subject over the next few days, but if everything works as expected with other boards from MSI and whatnot, then there probably won't be another video on this topic. We can just put this one to rest for now. Of course, I'm very interested to hear from you guys, those of you who own a third gen Ryzen processor, if you've updated your BIOS and you were seeing issues previously, uh, is it now fixed? And there is some people who were stuck at really low frequencies. Uh, I saw that with, I think it was about three boards had fairly broken BIOSes. So I'm keen to retest those boards when they do get the newer GC code. But if you guys have a board that was stuck at a low frequency, how is it going now? Very interested to hear. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate what we do here on Box, you can also jump over to our Patreon page. That'll give you uh, some behind the scenes information. You get access to Tim and I on Discord and of course the monthly live stream. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.